Hello, I am back in the van after being away for a few weeks cruising on the boat. I'm now moored up for winter and what is more, at the time of filming this, the UK is about to go into another lockdown in the next couple of days. So, the good news is, plenty of time to do stuff on the van. The bad news is, can't go anywhere in the van once I've actually done it. I suspect I may have a couple of nights sleeping here in the car park, just so I feel I've got a bit of a van experience once this is all done. And what am I doing? I am... renovating is the wrong word. Improving my original design. I started this actually back in the summer. I didn't film what I was doing. I just did it for a bit of escapism and relaxation for myself. So I didn't want to film it. I just wanted to get on with it. But I'm remaking the cupboards and cabinets. I'll show you what I've done so far. You may recall the corner unit, which was just some shelves, which I made very badly and was really very ugly. And there it is sitting unloved outside the van. It was not very well made, it wasn't very pretty to look at, and it was just shelves with a little lip, which meant that you couldn't really put much in there because as you were driving along and going around a corner, things could fly out unless they were just not high enough to go over the lip. So, not very satisfactory. And also, across from the side of that unit, across the top of the cooker, I had a shelf unit, which I have now taken down, and again, that was the similar sort of thing. It was just a shelf with a little lip. And although I could put some light things on there, and I did drive many miles with just little things up there. I think I had a thing of loo roll, a packet of mini um, cornflakes packets, things like that. Uh, and they mostly stayed in place. Nothing, nothing actually fell out. It wasn't ideal. I would have preferred to have a little cupboard unit up there with doors on the cupboard. So that is what I'm trying to do. I'm remaking the corner unit and I'm going to remake the shelving unit. And this is the new corner unit so far, which as you can see, for a start, has two large drawers at the bottom so things can go in there and stay where they're put. And it's also taller than the old unit. It actually goes up to the ceiling. So that top space is going to be left open and I'll just use that for storing things when I am parked up. And I was going to put a drawer here but realised it's so high that you wouldn't be able to see into the drawer when you pulled it out. So I'm just going to put a um, openable front on that, on a hinge. And then these drawers, they're not on runners, a pondered runners, but I thought, Do you know what, furniture makers of old never had runners. So I'm going to see how they go as they are. And obviously I have not yet stained it or varnished it to match the existing woodwork. But I'm reasonably pleased with this. It was an absolute swine to make because the van obviously has no straight lines anywhere. And it's all curves and you might think those two sides are vertical and parallel to each other and all this. And it turns out they're not. It was very awkward. But I'm quite pleased with the final unit. As you can see, I also had to account for the corner bit of the van. There's a main structural um, end bit in the corner which I had to go round in the drawers. And I'll just put these knobs on and they pull out fairly well I think. So I'm quite pleased with those. The only thing I've realised of course after making this bottom one is that it will pull out kind of onto this one and might scratch it so you have to kind of just lift it. But um, I think once I've sanded and varnished and everything, it'll blend in quite neatly. And then the only other thing I've got to do is put some sort of mechanism on the front of these so they can't slide open while you're driving. I have been for a drive like this and they do, unsurprisingly, come open. So some little latch or something to stop them coming open, just for while driving. This is what I've made so far for that third shelf slash cupboard. As you can see, I need to trim the uh, screw holding that in. And the idea is that that will go there with some hinges probably on the top and then it'll kind of open like that, I think. Hopefully. Still working on that plan. As for the shelf unit that runs across the top here, the main issue I have with trying to make this nicer and better is that that ducting, the white ducting carrying the wires up to the ceiling lights, is incredibly ugly and I don't know what possessed me. I was always going to camouflage it, never got round to it, but even if I did, it's not very pretty and it gets in the way of a shelf. 
and in the old shelf I just did a little cut out for it but I don't want to do that again. This is what exists so far of the new shelf, a bottom bit which is the shelf and then that shaped large bit is going to be the fronts of the cupboards and then those other little bits there are dividers between the cupboards. It's proving to be one of those troublesome projects where I made an initial go at the front cupboard bit and it, it kind of was in fact I made it almost perfect in the end after a lot of messing about I, I made it almost perfect except I'd forgotten to account for the depth of the shelf so it was great except it needed to be nine millimeters deeper so using that perfect piece as a template I took a fresh piece of wood drew round it and added nine millimeters extra to the bottom whereupon having cut that piece out it was too big I just you can imagine the exasperation so I'm still working on that and one of the main reasons that it's hard to work on is because of that wiring duct that's in the way so I can't properly put the new cupboard unit into where it's going to be it's kind of forward by a couple of centimeters so what I need to do is remove the wiring duct but in order to do that I need to reroute the wires that go up to the ceiling fan and the lights and for that I need to take the ceiling down. So that is today's project. The ceiling is only held up with a number of small screws into wooden battens. So taking it down should be, touch wood, straightforward. Unfortunately it will also require me to remove the base plate of the fan because that's partially holding the ceiling up. That's just more screws but it's a bit fiddly. And I should mention the idea is instead of those wires coming down behind the kitchen unit and they run across underneath the floor here into the electrics cupboard what I'll do is run them out the back of the electrics cupboard and up that corner where the solar panel wires come down and up and up and up and up and take them up round there somewhere and behind the ceiling there. In order to help take the ceiling down I've brought my infamous extendable poles which can hold things up while I'm unscrewing so it doesn't just all collapse on me. It's a few minutes later and the first problem is that two of the poles won't collapse down past that length. You twist and twist and they're just twanging the springs inside. These were very cheap. I'm not entirely surprised they've got twanged up inside but it is annoying. Realise this may not be feasible. Okay, this is going to take some thought. You see, that edge of the front goes behind that grey carpeted bit. I notice also the carpet's starting to unstick, but that's a separate issue. But it goes behind there, so I can't just pull it down. I'll need to slide it out, but sliding it out would mean sliding it out where the back bit is and in fact I now remember what a great difficulty I had putting the roof in I will see how this goes wish me luck how did I do this Alrighty, I had to stop filming because I ended up at the back of the van yanking this whole thing forward. I was never happy with how I did the roof, the ceiling, but it has sufficed and I, it's probably too late to change it now. Now what I need to do is disconnect the lights here so that the wire is free and then I can reroute it. 
Hopefully that's easy, just take that tape off and pull the connectors apart. And we have progress. For the avoidance of doubt the electricity is currently switched off so it doesn't matter those two being in close contact to each other. I have freed those terminals and also freed these ones crucially which means I can now take them back down the ducting and reroute them. And then I need to do the same for the, uh, the back half of the roof. Now I think to remove this I have to pull out some little plastic caps that are there and there and there and there were screws underneath. I have a sneaking suspicion there are only four screws because the two I've taken out so far at the front and then there's another two at the back have a little indent to let you get a screwdriver in, whereas the one I was trying to pry there doesn't. Now I should really go back and look at my old videos. That's not a bad idea, is it? Having taken off the fly screen, I can now detach the entire bottom half of the fan, which does have some wiring attached. Oh, go away, fly. So you take the fly screen away and the flies appear. How did I not leave myself more slack of that wire? That was stupid, wasn't it? What kind of idiot doesn't leave himself enough slack? Ah! Yep, that's definitely as tight as it's going to go. Oh, that was really stupid. What am I? An idiot! Ugh. What I'm going to hope for now is that unlike the front half of the roof I'm going to hope I can just take those screws at the near edge off and that that panel will then drop down enough that I can get from the wiring going from over there to both the fan and the light without taking the whole panel down. The first very tiny thing I notice is that that tape has come away from the um, insulation, thus breaching my vapour barrier very, very, very slightly. I've still got loads of the old tape, I'll redo that. However, what we can also see is wires there for the lights, and somewhere over there, wires there for the fans, so I can get to them. Well, well, look what we have here. We have front lights and rear lights, wires detached. We've even got the frame of the fan detached and holding it up with poles, as you can see. So I can now have a go at rerouting the wires. I've taken the rear roof panel down anyway because, as you can see in this corner, that's one of the battens that was stuck to the roof which seems to be very effectively stuck to the ceiling, but not to the metal of the roof anymore. The other ones are still in place, but that glue did not hold. So I'll redo it. And there it is. The glue has bonded very well with the wood, but for whatever reason, it didn't bond with the metal. Whereas the other ones are all very secure and still up there. Perhaps I didn't clean that bit of metal well enough. Anyway. I'll get some sticky stuff and do it again. Just on the off chance that I ever need to take the roof down again and do the rewiring, I'm going to re-crimp the connections on the lights and the fan so that instead of using insulation tape to wrap round the exposed metal, I use the type of crimps that cover the connection so that I don't need to wrap the tape round it because getting that off was a right pain. So there's the connections as they are now, but if I swap them for ones like this, come on, there we go, the whole thing becomes encased in the plastic, so I won't need to worry about insulation tape. 
With the hours of daylight being quite short now, I was not planning on having a lunch break today. But I just, I've got to that point where I feel I need to stop for a break and a cup of tea and a sandwich because it's all feeling a bit, frankly, overwhelming. Having taken the roof down and needing to do the rewiring and everything, I'm just, I need a break. So I'm going to stop. <laughs>